So welcome, thank you for coming to my session. Are you having fun in Drupal Camp Bratislava? Yeah, it's good. Are you ready for tonight's party? Yeah, don't miss it, it's gonna be awesome. We've been warming up yesterday a little. So tonight is gonna be awesome. So we are gonna talk about uh, headless Drupal. It's like Drupal with no head. I'm gonna explain what is that. And uh, this is the hashtag. Uh, if you want to tweet and blame the session, like what a crappy session, blah, 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 you can use it. And then, yeah, let's start. That, that's me uh, working. This is, uh, yeah, this is a guy taking naps, as usual. Uh, this is my Twitter handle, if you want to also just troll me or whatever. And uh, I come from Spain, specific uh, places here in the south, where there is some really good food, nice people, and this stuff. But uh, yeah, it's like here. This, I, I'm pretty happy to be here because it's like being in Spain. But now I'm living in Sweden. This is Sweden, and more or less I'm here in Stockholm. It's completely the opposite. It's dark, cold as hell, and it's, yeah, it's fucking expensive, whatever. Yeah, but I'm living there. <laughs> That's my blog. I'm pretty lazy, but uh, you can find some information and stuff there about me or whatever. So I don't blog too much le these days, but maybe I'm going to catch up again with blogging. OK, let's start. Why, why this session? Because Drupal 7 frontend sucks. Is there anybody here that thinks that Drupal 7 frontend is good? Everybody likes Drupal fronting? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I guess you are in the ground session then. Okay, now, uh, the fronting sucks a little. Okay, could be nice, so could be, could be better, could be worse. Okay, but uh, one of the main reasons because uh, Drupal 7 fronting sucks is DBTs. Do you know DBTs? Yeah, it's like wrappers all around and it's like a big chain of stuff that you don't really need it, and tons of classes that you never use, and IDs and this stuff. Yeah, do you agree with me that this is not good? And when a front-end developer starts to mess with that, he just pop up his eyes and just kill himself because it's like, oh, this is the no way. Okay, so there, there are also country uh, modules that make your life easier, like, Panels or uh, I don't know fences or uh, whatever. Yeah, but this is not the solution, I guess, because when a front-end developer has to install a module, uh, yeah, it's like uh, okay, I don't understand why I don't get the front-end clean, you know, crystal clear. And uh, yeah, and Divitis is so famous that he has a Twitter account that is trolling Morton, so this is awesome, also. Okay, so. Continue. On the other hand, we have Drupal 8. Uh, Drupal 8 fronting is Morten DK certified. So that's the only thing that makes Morten happy. Okay? He was an uh, angry, angry frontender, okay? angry thimmer, and now he's happy thimmer with a tweak and this kind of a stuff. So he's starting to get better. So, um, yeah, and, and also the consensus banana. So we are we created also in, in Drupal 8 a new uh, theme that is called Classy. So you ha can have a theme with no classes, and we you can have a, have a theme full of classes that is Classy, and it's pretty nice. If you want more information about that, uh, it's too late because uh, Lauri was talking about that this morning. But if uh, you can catch up with me or with Lauri, and then you can have more information about uh, fronting in Drupal 8. But yeah, the, the front end moves faster than Drupal, whether Drupal likes or not. Yeah, that's something that I was in Drupal Kong Amsterdam. Uh, Eatings uh, have a session about uh, how front end is evolving. And it looks like there are a lot of front end technologies that are growing, expanding JavaScript frameworks. I guess everything has a name in JavaScript framework. 
you know, there is a beer JS, coffee JS, there is everything JS. So uh, yeah, there are a lot of technologies, front-end technologies, they are evolving, but Drupal cannot be as fast as, as those. So it's really hard to follow these technologies. So this is a little bit tricky. If you want to create a project, big project like Drupal, that is taking forever to release, and everybody, every time that you decide that we are going to use, for example, Backbone.js, now Backbone.js can be obsolete, so this is really hard to decide what is the best path. And also, we have uh, devices. We have smartphones, also these uh, cutting-edge uh, gadgets that are uh, popping up now. Uh, for example, Apple Watch. Yes, do you know that Apple Watch has no browser, okay? So if you want to create some backend application in Drupal to push data into Apple Watch, how you can do it, or how you can interact. So here is the problem, because for example, for a smartphone it's okay, it's easy, because uh, Drupal 8 is completely responsive, so you can use Drupal 8 with your smartphone or tablet in an easy way, because they, even the backend is completely f uh, responsive, and it's pretty nice. Does anybody try to use Drupal 8 with his smartphone? No? You should try. It's pretty good. You can create content. It was really well. It's nice. Nice experience. So, with Apple Watch, you don't have a browser. What you can do? I have another example. It's like a helicopter. There's a this is a idea. So we have a SNES helicopter, and we want a SNES helicopter to push data into Drupal, you know, uh, through the Wi-Fi connect connection or something like that, automatically. So how you can do that? The idea is solution: decoupling. So you need to decouple Drupal front end and use another layer, not the no not. Uh, not a front end that it needs um, a browser, or you, you need another another uh, way of connect with uh, Drupal. So in this case, we use uh, first the coupling is uh, also make uh, the life easier for front enders. That's important because, uh, as I said, Drupal 7 front end sucks. Drupal 8 front end is good, but even if you don't like it. Uh, there is people that can use Drupal, uh, Drupal 8. You can, can develop themes or front-end for Drupal 8 with no uh, skills in Drupal. So, for example, with Twig, you don't need to know. For example, you remember in template, PHP template, you have a lot of PHP stuff inside the templates. Uh, you have a lot of pre-processed functions and this kind of stuff that you need to pop uh, uh, information from variables into the templates, the kind of stuff that is really tedious for front-end developers. In Drupal, it is not going to be needed. But even, even though if you don't want to use anything that is related to the Drupal 8 front-end, you can just simply decouple it and use your own application in Angular, Ember, or whatever new JavaScript technology you like. OK, that's what I saw uh, the coupling about. And on the other hand, this is a reminder. Uh, there is, this is an example of a change from one front end. Uh, that was this from Mango, and they changed to this, okay? Using a new JavaScript thingy, blah, blah. So they replaced this markup. It was not the same. And this is the result. So this was the number of visits, and look at this. So uh, SEO is important when you replace your front end. So take care when you are going to use a cool front end framework or whatever, because Google is going to, or the search engines are going to have troubles indexing your data if you are not pushing the data in a good way. So the coupling is good, but be careful when you decouple and what you decouple, okay? So in this case, I'm going to explain what is headless Drupal. Headless Drupal is a way of decoupling the, the backend and push content in a different way that is going to be like in REST, you're using like a REST e RESTful API. And it's pretty useful for your front-end framework or even for even for the SNES helicopter application, you know, for devices that they don't have a browser. So first, we don't need country anymore. In Drupal 7, 
we had the, you want to create REST, REST API with web services and blah, blah, blah. So you, you have to use, you know, anybody did some RESTful API in Drupal 7 before? No? So you use, yeah? What module do you use? Service. Services. Service. What? RESTful. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the that's the good one. Yeah, but usually you use services. That is the like uh, the country module. But uh, that's true that the RESTful is a really nice uh, work that is doing. Uh, there's a Spanish guy that is um, Mateu, and also this uh, Amitai from Israel. It's good people. They are doing a really nice job creating a REST interface that like more following the industrial standards. Yeah, but in Drupal 7, you have to use services or RESTful and also a few plugins, no plugins, but the modules for views to export views in JSON also and blah, blah, blah. So, in this case, in Drupal 8, you have uh, more or less the modules that you need in core. So, they are in core. Uh, you have a HAL module to export the data in HAL syntax. Uh, you have the uh, HTTP basic authentication for handling the authentication and RESTful web services. That is the main, uh, like, this is like the services module in Drupal 7. And serialization is to just create the data in, export the data in JSON and also XML. And um, yeah, in the other hand, you have new permissions. This is important because uh, it takes some time when you start to get uh, like 403 responses, like uh, no permission denied and blah, blah, blah. It's because you didn't enable the permission. And the permission, more or less, the usual thing is access, so get uh, requests for an anonymous, this is for authenticated, and delete, patch, and post. Uh, only for authenticated users. That's common sense, okay? If you want to allow uh, people to create the lead content in your system with no authentication, that's up to you. Yeah, this is uh, CRUD. Um, this is not a picture of the yesterday's party, okay? Uh, yeah, and, and the, this is not about CRUD. It's, uh, CRUD is uh, create, read, update, and, and delete. Um, how you create the content uh, using REST and Drupal 8 as backend. Yeah, you can use uh, sample requests like this using core. You can use also JavaScript or whatever, but this, this example is using core. So you just, in, to create content, you just send a post request and then you send the user and password in clean in your terminal. That is pretty secure. And uh, yeah, the format is HAL and JSON, uh, and then you just say the endpoint that you are going to create. In this case, in Drupal 8, you know that almost everything is an entity. If not, uh, Fago is here. He can just say yes or not. Almost everything is an entity. Wow. You have yeah, content entities, configuration entities, but yeah. In this case, you just say that this, uh, the entity that you want to create is a node, and you just send this data, bi data binary that is like the stuff that you want to create. This is a little bit tricky, but uh, in this case, you just indicate re the endpoint that is REST type, blah, blah, blah. This uh, is going to be a node of type page, and this is the title value and the body value. Okay, it's a little bit tricky. I, I hope that the, the, there are going to be country modules to make this easier, okay? But this is what, what it is. And this is the response that you get. It's a 201 created and blah, blah, blah. And, and also the location, the node that is created. We are going to see a demo of this stuff later. The, this is for create, this is for read. Now, for read is easier. You only do a get request and then you, say, you tell the endpoint. Okay, and also you just, as usual, you get the, the format. This is the response. This is a, yeah, this is a madness of stuff that I'm going to explain later, a little. But uh, this is important that the HAL JSON describes the API that you created. So you get the um, information, but not only the content. You, for example, you get a, con a note, you don't li not only get the, the title and the body, you get also useful information like 
I don't know, yeah, the they created the language, I don't know, also links to um, fields or uh, taxonomy terms or whatever. So this is really nice. It's pretty useful when you want to create your own API. So that's powerful. Update is going to be more or less like the create uh, request. You use patch instead um, instead update. I'm going to explain that because there is an issue for this. And the same. And then you just specify the um, node that you want to update and then you just send the data, the new data. Then you get the request that is 204 no content. It's pretty useful, this message. And delete is like a get request, but you just change delete, and then you just specify the node that you want to delete. More or less, this is the basics of uh, how to uh, use or consume a REST API. That's something that maybe somebody already did before. For example, Twitter, Facebook API, something like this who already used a REST API before. That's OK. So you are not getting bored. That's perfect. OK, and this is the response. 204 no content is pretty also informative. OK, but not you not only do uh, headless using these uh, requests for nodes or for entities in this case. You have also views, and views is in core in Drupal 8, okay? And you can also get data from views using REST. So when you are going to create a new view, you have, uh, do you remember, to create a page, block, and this is new, REST export settings. And this was before last summer, before Drupal Atom last summer. This was not there. It was only page and block. And then I, I was working on uh, this presentation for, I, don't know, for I guess, it was Drupal Camp Serbia. Uh, and then I was talking with uh, a friend and say, OK, why we don't have in here an option when you want to create a Rex export of your view? And so uh, instead going to the view and just changing the configuration, so why you, don't can, why you can't create it directly from here? So. I asked uh, Peter, who is a good Belgian guy, he's pretty nice, he's working in the European Commission. And I filed this issue, I opened the issue there, in the meantime I was discussing with him, and he fixed it. Like in a couple of hours we have the patch committed and everything ready. So that's how Drupal is created. So that's because I suggest people to go to the code sprints, because that's the way to build stuff that you really need. So it was only a requirement from me, and I say, okay, this is something useful, we can do it. And he said, I'm going to do it, and he did it. In a couple of hours, this feature was in Drupal core, okay? And everybody is taking good uh, use of this, okay? So my suggestion is talk to each other, go to the code sprints. That's how we build together Drupal 8, because maybe other guys have better ideas than this one, okay? That's my suggestion. No more spam. Yeah, that was uh, last summer, so it was completely open. Now mm, there is no more features. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, mm, now it's only for criticals. But uh, that's for uh, Drupal 8.0, but for 8.1. So you can postpone things for 8.1, and that's, that doesn't mean that it's not going to be in core. But it's going to be in first, uh, first thing is first. First, release Drupal 8, <laughs> 8.0, and then we can go for 8.1, OK? But that's, that's how it works. I mean, you just propose something, even you can send the patch. And then people discuss it, and if they consider that it's okay, they say, okay, this is going to be in core. Okay. So when you create a view, uh, you use the REST export, then you have a key the, here, the format, the serializer, and then you can add uh, filters of fields as usual. And the thing is, you have a path, so you have the endpoint also for your REST view. You use in the style options, you use also, you can configure the format. You have JSON, JSON, or XML. I don't suggest to use X XML, okay? 
This is a sample request for this specific view. That is the endpoint. And then you get a get request. And you are going to get uh, all the information in that view. In this case, we created like a list of nodes. So the, all the nodes are going to appear in a HAL JSON format. Yeah, as I said, don't use XML. It's pretty big. There's too much information. And when you use, for example, a data plan in your smartphone, it's consuming a lot of data that you don't really need. Yeah, let's compare HAL versus JSON. And yeah, use HAL if you care about the definition of your API. Okay, HAL provides this kind of uh, useful information about the links or about the the other relationships that the, the your content has with other uh, entities or other content, and also if the your content has embedded items or files, images, or something like that. So more or less, this is a simple HAL format. And then you get a lot of information inside this. But you can use JSON if you only care about the content. So you say, OK, I don't care about the API because I only want to get data and just push the data, and that's all. So then you can use JSON. It's pretty, pretty, pretty lightweight. And it's, uh, it's not so it's straightforward. You can read it really easy. So that's my suggestion. There's a long discussion about HAL because it's pretty powerful. But for a small application, then you shouldn't mess around. And yeah, by default, in core, you have HAL and JSON format. So every time that you get a request, it's going to be in HAL and JSON. You can enable JSON requests in different ways. One is go to the rest.settings.yaml file, and then you have this more or less by default support formats HAL JSON. So you just only add a new line here uh, with JSON, or you just replace it. And also, you have the basic authentication. You want authentication or not. OK, this is by default how the configuration for the REST uh, services works. You can edit the file directly, so it's going to work. That's not the way to do it. And you can also go to the configuration management um, interface, user interface. And then you can go to the simple configuration. There is the REST settings. That is going to be the, the access to the same file. And you can edit the file here. Just put in JSON, for example, and save it. And it's like if you edit the file uh, manually. It's the same. And there is a project, a country module, that is called REST UI. Uh, I tried to show this in a demo, but it's not working. And uh, maybe there were some changes in the latest committees or whatever. Uh, it's not working. So anyway, this is like an example of the interface. So you use this for content, node entities. And this is for uh, action entities, blocks, breakpoints. So you can create everything. And then here is where you enable get, post, delete, or patch uh, requests for a specific entity. And then you can configure every setting. You can do it also in the in the REST uh, YAML file, in the REST settings. Or you can do it here from the interface. It's more or less the same. Yeah, And this is the request. Mm, yeah. This is the same. That the, yeah, this is duplicated. I don't know why. What is it doing? This is the request for, ah, this is in JSON. OK, sorry. This is uh, the same request using JSON, and then you get the information in JSON. It's a little bit uh, more readable than in uh, in, Ham in in Hull, uh, but anyway, you can just k clean it up a little. Also, take care because Hull JSON is the only format supported for po post and patch methods. So I was missing uh, the, the if you want to use. Um, JSON for post and patch. There is an issue here. You can work on that during the sprints tomorrow. <laughs> you can just take a look. Also, you can test. There is a patch already sent. There is a, the init testing. So you can just download the patch and try it. And if you notice that there is something is wrong, you can just comment something. So I told you that because I, it took me like two hours to figure out that. And it's like, uh, this is me, and this is my wife waiting for me. Like, yeah, 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 it's like five minutes. Wait, wait, I, I have it. It was uh, like after tw two hours, I figured out that it was not possible to do post or patch uh, requests using JSON. OK? So <laughs> that's good. It's going to save you two hours of your life, more or less. So uh, how I get a cleaner uh, JSON response in views, for example? 
that's good because then you use fields here. And in the configuration of the field, you can use this row output. I'm going to show that in the demo. And then that good, that's good because you only get the title and the body. And that's all. You get a really clean uh, JSON uh, with no extra dummy data or the, yeah, extra uh, raw data. OK, so how do you feel now? What is the experience? It's better? Yeah? No? OK. Good. Yeah? And UI also is a great tool to manage many connections and, uh, and uh, have a clean view of that. Mm. So I think it's a big problem. Yeah, it's, get, it's getting somewhere, you know? Uh, there is still too much work to do, but uh, it's getting somewhere. I'm going to show you a little demo if everything works. Let me check. Where is my. Where is my. What? Ah, here. Okay. Yeah, I have something here. Yep. Okay, now wait. I'm gonna duplicate the screen. If not, I'm not gonna see anything here. Okay, now I have it. Perfect. Good. Okay, now let me find my. Yep. Okay, it's here. No. Yeah, I lost it. No, no way. Okay. Perfect. Um, let's see if you can see everything. Yep. I'm going to make it bigger if you want. But uh, also, I'm going to use this. Is that good? Maybe change the color? What do you think? It's better this color? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Great. Okay, I'm gonna delete everything. That's how you reinstall Drupal. In a good way. Okay, I guess it's pretty clear that I'm dropping everything. Okay, I'm gonna reinstall this installation, yeah, fuck, good. Okay, in the meantime, you have some questions? It's gonna take a couple of minutes. No questions? Okay, perfect. I have a Yeah. But there are different authentication methods for REST. One is the basic authentication, but you can have also cookie authentication or even you can use OAuth that is the official that you should use. That is the most secure. But in this case there is not integration for OAuth or, you know. Yeah, it's the easy way. It's not the, the good way, <laughs> yeah, because this plain text, uh, user and password, is not okay. But uh, yeah, I mean, you can use different authentic authentication methods. I just show this, but you can use different ones. It's okay, now Drupal is installed, so I'm going to refresh this. 
Okay, so I'm gonna make this bigger. Is that okay? This? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's user pass. Okay, everything is clean. I'm gonna show you how to enable the and configure everything to create like an REST backend using Drupal 8. Okay. First, let's go to extend. Let's go down, 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 down. And then you have here the modules. I'm going to enable everything. OK? Save. I can do the same with Rush, but it's more graphical. So it's a couple of seconds. OK, first thing that was here. Second, I go to configure the permissions. Don't forget the permission because it takes a while after you notice that you don't have permission. And then you go here. Okay. And then let's say for delete, authenticated, forget, both, and then patch and post for authenticated. More or less this is the default one. You can use your own configuration. It's up to you. Okay, we have this done. And let's do something. I go to content. It's clean. Okay. So let's create content. I have here a hint. Okay. So to create was this. Okay. You can see that it's call. The request is post. I'm going to use user and pass. Pretty secure. And then I'm going to use Hal and JSON. I'm going to create a node that is of type article. And the title is going to be node creating using core at Drupal Cam CS Bratislava. And this is the body. OK? Do it. And I got a 201 created. And I go back, I refresh. Oh, I got my note here. Arr, it's good. And then this is the title and this is the body. Good. So you can create content easy. The idea is you can create also content in fields, taxonomy terms that I was discussing as I was reading that is not ready yet. There is a little patches over there that you can just apply and make it happen. So I prefer to go to the easy way because it's not to, to have a demo that don't fail, OK? But if you want, we can just try with different uploading images or whatever in the sprints or something, OK? Or even if you try at home and you need help. So we have uh, Fago here, that is the entity guy. And also, there's also a nice, a nice guy that is uh, Klaus, that is from Austria. And uh, he is the responsible of REST. And we can ask him, OK, why this is not working? So you can have a good conversation with the people that is working directly with this, OK? So let's go to the next sample. Next sample is update, for example. Update is patch. And remember, patch the request patch with user and password. It's awesome. Hal and JSON format. I'm going to update the node one, OK? If you remember, this is the node one, OK? And I'm going to change the. The, uh, you have to tell that is the type, the entity type. There's an article. And I, we are going to change the title to Welcome to Drupal Camp Bratislava 2015. And yes, and this is the body. Ready? Do. The response is 204, no content. Could be better some success or but whatever. And then I'm going to refresh this. Welcome to Drupal Camp. It's awesome. It's working good. So next, uh, I'm going to delete it. OK. Yeah. Eh? Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. Could you send uh, only the stuff you're changing in the page? Yeah. For example, if I want to change only the title, yeah, I'm going to do it. For example, here. Okay, 
So I'm going to delete this part, second part. I guess this title do this. Yeah, I guess it's ready. Okay. 204 no content. I, the body is still there, it's the same. And I changed the other title. So you, you can replace only the data that you want to replace. It's like a, an update. You don't need to specify all the data because it, it assumes that it's created. So that data is, is already filled. And uh, let's delete it. Everybody loves to delete stuff. So the node is the num uh, node number one. I'm going to delete it. You get the same, 204 node content. And if I go here, it is page no phone. If I go to content, it's not there. Good. OK. Second part. Let's create a view. OK? We go to views, add new view. And then we have this cool feature, thanks to uh, Peter. And this is going to be our REST view in Bratislava. <laughs> and this is going to be REST. Uh, yeah, we don't have content, so I'm going to create content. For creating content, I use SL Ipsum. You know Samuel L. Ipsum? This is awesome. So I just copy this. Uh, sorry. And then I'm going to create articles, for example. I copy this, put this there. Uh, this is wrong. Uh, I'm gonna generate another one. Oh, this is not. Yeah, add content again. I'm gonna create three only to don't bore you. Okay. Don't use this at work. It's not safe to work. <laughs> yeah, especially for customers. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember uh, we were using. Do uh, you remember? Uh, you, you know, kitten place. I guess or place kitten. Yeah, you know place kitten. Okay, I replaced this for. Uh, was place. Zombie, I guess. Yeah, play zombie. That was, <laughs> yeah. The, the customer was a little, a little bit pissed off with this. Yeah, <laughs> don't do this kind of stuff. Only for internal projects. Yeah. So we have a few content created here, as you can see. And then if we go to back to the view, then you can see that the view is exporting the data here in the preview. Okay. And then we, do, we get uh, some in good information. I'm gonna save the view here. And we are going to do a get request to to this endpoint, OK? So let me find a get request list somewhere here. Yeah, wow, 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 here. OK, I guess I had to change this. Rest, and I guess that's all. OK, I got a not acceptable. Uh, well, let me check. Uh, Format, settings, yeah, it's not acceptable because I didn't enable the, the format. Okay, I'm going to enable for HAL JSON and for JSON. I'm going to try to do both requests. I'm going to save. Yep, and let's try again. Yeah, I got the same. <laughs> that sucks. Okay, let me check to JSON. Yo, uh, uh, what? Rest. What? Oh. No, I don't think so. Okay, let me check with something. What? 
crocodile. Let me check with this. No, no, no. Wow, 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 wow. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what happened. Mm. That's interesting. Let me check again here. Yeah, it's specified here. Ah, uh, Jason. Uh, I don't know. Uh, let me check something else. But uh, it should get slash Drupal eight slash rest. Last Drupal eight slash rest. Okay, I'm gonna try again with uh, using fields in this case and see. Okay, if I use field, I am like gonna get this. I'm gonna save here. And uh, let me check again. I get the same. Yeah. Okay, I don't know. There's something I'm gonna dig, out, dig uh, into that. But it should work like this. Okay, I don't know if it's permissions. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna show you the configuration, uh, this is the configuration management. Uh, Robert Douglas that I just left was exp uh, explaining how to use configuration. And then you go to single import export, you can select here. What is this? Let's go. Ah, no, export, sorry. Export. And then you go to simple configuration, and then you go here to rest settings. And here you have the the supported formats, so I can just do something like this. Oh, sorry. Can do something like this for get and go to import. Simple configuration, configuration rest settings, and I paste this. I say import, confirm, and it'll suppose that the, the configuration is imported. I'm going to check again. And it's here. So that's how you update configuration in Drupal. And I'm going to try again here if it supports this one. Anyway, yeah, I can dig into that later. So, yeah, I don't know if I have much time. Yeah, let me check. The domain? You mean this? Drupal 8? Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, I can do that. Okay, let me let me check. Yeah, the thing is saying in the same box. So localhost here is the same web server, but I can open. A, this is another one. Uh, sorry, I can do this, but uh, I guess it's not gonna work. But I can try anyway. So. Now I'm in my computer. No, same. No, it's like there is something missing in the view configuration. Now I guess it's, uh, everything is in the same file. You go to the file, and then you can see the uh, the configure the um, 
you can see the information here. Rest. You get the resources, and then you say that this entity, no entity node, and then you create another resource after this one, and then you, you create for, for example, entity node, entity user, or entity block, or whatever. So, and then you create for each one. And then you don't need to create everything. For example, for node, you, you want to get only, to have only get, you can delete this. Okay? That's something that you can do it. Or you want to change the authentication also. Yeah. But, okay, sorry for that, but I don't know why it's not working. So I'm going to continue. Ooh. Uh, uh, uh. Okay, okay. Uh, uh. I have it there. Yep, okay. So I don't know why it's not working because I have the request here. Get. Let me check. I'm doing a get request, no? Yeah. yeah. Accept. Okay, never mind. Uh, we can check it later. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. So, these are really good resources. Uh, this is uh, what we've been talking about. Um, from Gizra, that they have really good resources, how they implement REST for Drupal 7, uh, a lot of things that they can be applied to Drupal 8. There's a couple of blog posts that I wrote about this um, with an application in Backbone that you can reuse. And this is something that I want to show you because it's really great. That is this, for example. This is a good example of why you should use Headless. Okay, this is a uh, Helix Drupal uh, using Blessed, and then you have everything, how to set up, and look at what you can do. More or less, you can see something. So you use the dashboard, this, and then you go logging with the terminal, and then you get an interface like this, and these are real points that are getting from a back backend in Drupal. So then you can get an uh, interface in the terminal and getting data from Drupal in, uh, in, in real time. So, okay, it's super nerd, but it's one example of something that is completely decoupled and not using a browser uh, solution. Um, yeah. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, no. Oh, okay. F F5. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> yeah, there's something wrong with the um, LibreOffice. I don't know why. Oh, man. Where is my... Okay, I have it now. Mm. Ah, no. Okay, so this is this. If you want to contribute, this is a list of uh, issues where you can start to work. Uh, you can just work in uh, handling uh, collections, the config activity via REST, and yeah, the uh, crowd permissions, and also uploading files. It's almost there, so you can upload the uh, images from your phone or from your application. It's almost there, but it still gets a little bit work and testing, a lot of testing. Um, yeah, I'm going to publish this slide so you can just have to access the links. So anyway, you can ask, uh, ask me if you want to work on something specific. Join the code sprints tomorrow, please. Join the code sprints. This is important. And uh, yeah, questions? I guess we have time. Oh, okay, I guess that's all. Thank you for coming. <laughs>